Welcome to the vault. Daniel. It's Monday. I'm Daniel. Rex. And we missed St. Pat's yesterday. It unfortunately didn't fall on a weekday. So this is our, our Irish whiskey tribute. A tribute to get just face drunk and do bad Irish accents. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> so, I, like offensively bad. I could try an offensively bad Irish accent. All your accents are offensive. Remember that uh, we had the whole ruling. Um, so you had an ass coffee. Wait, wait. So I need to remember previous episodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hang on. This guy named Robert Stein invented a column still. Yeah. And then it was perfected by an ass coffee. Yes. In the 1830s. But most of the, I and, and by the way, Ireland embraced it at first. There were some distilleries. Somewhere around 20 distilleries were using column stills in Ireland. But the big brands, mm -hmm. like Red Breast, the one you like, Powers. Uh, I would like a lot, but Middleton, right? Yeah. All, all of these guys railed against the neutral spirit as this deadly silent spirit that's an inferior product, and single pot still whiskey is the only real whiskey. So, right? You know the. <laughs> so we're gonna start with. There's a theme, by the way. Have you have you noticed the theme in a lot of these stories? Yeah. People doing so, doing something a certain way, that they decide that's the right way, yeah. and everything that comes after that is obviously an inferior, right. bad, evil thing. And then the good ideas work, and right. about two decades later they're like, hey, we're cool with that, <laughs> or a hundred years in some cases, right. like this. So for almost, I'd like, say, 70, 80 years, they railed against the column still. So this is the classic, after the English did the malt tax, partially unmalted barley, single pot still, Irish whiskey. This is Powers 12. Now the Powers is a famous old brand. Right. But the nose gives you all that classic butterscotch. Shortbread cookie. Shortbread. Yeah. Oh. Just rich and kind of uh, melon, like a light melon note. Yeah, it's it's that sweetened buttery dessert, man. The reason why so many people find a gateway into whiskey through Irish mm -hmm. whiskey is because it's just so friendly and nice and and there's elements of really popular desserts and uh, it's hard not to enjoy just the the sweet there's some complexity but the sweet friendliness going on in the glass with Irish whiskeys on the taste you get that rich oily viscous sweetness yeah with a slight spicy barrel note on the finish because of that 12 year old age I'm assuming uh-huh I want to have can we get it's just really creamy can we get just it's like uh, a spice rack. Yeah. Let's get a spice rack in here. Okay. Because I often think... And you want to go looking for it? Well, I often think, ah, there's the spice in here, but I'm not, I'm not a chef. I don't cook. Yeah. So it was like, ah, but I don't, we can buy a spice I don't want to lead people wrong if I'm misremembering what the spice actually Let's see if we can buy a spice like. rack that has like the hundred range of like, it's just this massive selection of spices. Now, don't spices have a shelf life? Yeah, but only if you're cooking with them. If all we're doing is smelling them, we're probably fine. Okay. Right? All right. So here's the story of the the collapse of Irish whiskey, essentially. Yeah. At one point uh, in the 1800s, late 1700s, there ended up uh, being, you know, a, a, up to 100 distilleries, legal distilleries in Ireland. Right. It's a lot of whiskey, right? But then this thing happens. The English start taxing the shit out of everything. <laughs> They officially ruled that grain is real whiskey in the early 1900s, and in the meantime, Aeneas Coffee moves from Ireland to Scotland because the Scottish lowland blenders like Johnny Walker and Buchanan's and these guys fully embraced the column still. Right. They're like, yeah, we'll ramp up grain production. Yeah, yeah. Right around that same time when Scotch is starting to flood the market because they can ramp up production, and Ireland's having its own problems, in 1845 the potato famine hits. Okay. And so you have this complete collapse of Irish society, and right around the exact same time of that, a friar named Theobald Matthew begins to attempt to turn the entire country of Ireland into a non-drinking country. <laughs> He, at one point, he called the whiskey the demon drink. At one point, in a population of 8 million citizens, yeah. 5 million of them signed a pledge to not drink. Huh. Because if you remember, at the time, there was really a, a drinking problem, and there was gin was killing people, and, the, you know, the potato famine, people were starving to death, and sure. whiskey became the... It, it was a problem. So that makes, right? that makes sense. Like, it, it, today... It's easy to look back and judge and be like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Well, and you're using your day to day whiskey. life is people are getting super self destructive. Mm -hmm. well, they're often dying from like bad alcohol. Uh, and, you know, just horrible things are happening that have a lot to do with this drink. It's easy to demonize the drink and right. not 
all the things not that are, the actual problem and leading. not all the things that are driving people. so you attack the symptom yeah so uh, around that time when they lost up to 20 distilleries closed in a matter of like 10 10 years yeah and then um, the Prime Minister Robert Peel managed to get corn laws passed that allowed them to source cheaper grain from America into the UK and immediately the expensive barley that was being done in column stills right. switched to corn hmm. much cheaper easier to get and then so from that point on grain whiskey pretty much meant corn in most circumstances because right. it's so much more affordable um, around that time they started creating uh, blends right yeah so let's switch to a blend try that half water what do you think I think I could put that in a camelback and just, and just go for a jog. And just go for a jog. Sipping on the straw. So that was a very common way of drinking whiskey. As a matter of fact, the English brought that to India. Mm -hmm. And often in India, a more traditional way originally of drinking whiskey was pour a whiskey and then fill it with water. You know what though? Hmm. Drinking like that, you could get hammered. Yeah, fast. Because it's the same amount of alcohol. It is, but you can. It does not taste it like it. It flies by like, you know, yeah. you're drinking something lightly, okay, set that aside lightly flavored. And switch to. Bushmills Black Bush. Ooh, it's got now I picked this one. Some more spice in there. Um, I picked this one because over and over and over. Oh, but lighter on the taste. More, more character on the nose. Lighter on the flavors. Yeah. So as the collapse of Irish whiskey happens, you end up finally with one company owning all the whiskey in Ireland. There can be only one. But distilling at only two distilleries. They went straight Highland. Why? They? Because one, yeah. Why? Be because uh, one represented all the production in uh, Ireland, yeah. and the other one represented all the production in Northern Ireland. Mm. So Bushmills yeah. ended up being, uh, now it, for a long time, they still produced Bushmills, and then they eventually consolidated it all to Ireland. Right. And um, and then a couple other things happened. You thought, oh, it can't get any worse. And, and this is before the collapse of all of that. So around this time, it's causing the collapse, famine, economic collapse, pledges of abstinence, economic crash, and then you get World War I, and that causes obvious problems. <laughs> and then in between World War I and World War II, you have the Irish Civil War. Mm -hmm. And then you have World War II kick in, and they just can't seem to get ahead of it. And then in between that, you have Prohibition. Okay. Right? Yeah. So just one thing after another just kicked their asses. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm amazed anything survived. Just That's a testament. But Black Bush is a mix of a selection of aged malted right. barley okay. whiskey, or pot still whiskey, yeah. mixed with grain spirit. Okay. Right? So it's still slightly malty. Slightly malty. Right. This particular whiskey has been taken down to 40%. You can tell mm -hmm. it's got more uh, malty character, but it, there's also like this apple juice note, and it is... Uh, thinner because it's watered down compared to the 46% of the Powers 12. The Powers 12, man. So there's sherry just, cask in this too. Is there sherry? Yeah. I'm not getting the sherry at all. Oh, on the nose. I'm going back on the nose. There's yeah. the sherry. If you say the word, you can hear it. Yeah. No. Oh, so that was, I think that's probably the character I was finding on the nose because on the flavor, the sherry is not showing up for me. On the nose, sherry. Bam, and then a the flavor, I'm getting like a light apple juice. Yeah. But there is this, I mean, compared to this one, then, this is rich and a little bit musty. Yeah. This is fruity and light. There's an element of musty, but it's dominantly this honeyed, sugary, shortbread cookie on the powers. Remember, I'm relative, I'm, I'm speaking relatively. We're yeah. not comparing this to scotch. Right. I'm just saying that inside the Irish category, there's a more depth of rich, musty wood and, and barley notes than you find in these mixed grain versions. Between the two, though. Yeah, that power is so good. Yeah. Okay, let's finish with a final a an Irish single malt, which follows the. Is it just, just me or? Do I you felt not? like I was in the Key and Peel sketch just then. Let's try a single malt. Okay. Well. Okay. Also from remember that old sketch from uh, got Dave Chappelle. Yeah. He had an old skit called Black Bush. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're doing following that. Following that note, we're doing Dingle. <laughs> Dingle. Dingle. So is it just me or is single malt in Irish whiskey less common than scotch? 
Uh, well, yeah, well, because that's basically all that Scotch is famous for other than the blends. And in Ireland, you've got, they have an option with the pot still whiskey, too. But so, and get Ireland it. has three categories, and Scotland basically has two. Okay. So Currently. I mean, not by law, just dominant. Given the current popularity of mm -hmm. single malt whiskey. They've been doing it for a long time. They've been doing it a long time, yeah. but I would expect there to be a lot more options from Ireland single malt. Well, there's not a lot more distilleries. I mean, we're well, they're a growing. distillery can do tons of different lines. Yes, but I'm just saying uh, most of them are traditional. They're going on what the name has always made and things like that. So uh, you'll get single malts, but they're beginning to be more common from the newer distilleries that are popping up. Right. Right. We're going to make a single malt too. So you got Teeling has a single malt. You've got uh, the Dingle. So Dingle is uh, established in 2012. Now, here's my favorite part. They build themselves, and this is true, this is not a lie. Right. Uh, they build themselves as an artisan distillery because they work on such a small scale, they're able to pay attention to every detail. And they're another example of how small they are. Right. You know how many barrels they fill a day? Four. You know how many barrels we fill? <laughs> One a month. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good month. That's a good month. That's, yeah. what, that's us busting our ass. Yeah, so we're artisans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're the artisan's artisan, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, they're in uh, Dingle in the southwest of Ireland. Oh, man. And their first whiskey was released in 2016. This is batch two, by the way. So This is a mix of bourbon, Oloroso, and Pedro Jimenez casks. Yeah. So there's this... It's beautiful. This base of malt. And then on top of the malt, I'm getting a, like a mixed berry jam. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But a lighter berry, ironically. I'm thinking darker berries, but I think it's actually like it could be like a raspberry jam yeah, yeah. or, yeah. Like blueberries and raspberries and, see, I, I think there's blue, like blueberries are visually dark, but the taste for me of blueberry is a lighter taste. This is beautiful. It is. And it's like the, your, first, your first approach on the nose will be different than your third and fourth approach on the nose. Yes. Because I first got up to this thing and the sweet jam was like, oh, there's... Not all the sweetness. This is just a heavy malt, and now, then it starts to turn into like a waxy candy. Yeah. Oh man, come on. Yeah. That's amazing. You know what they did? They artisaned that. They artisaned the shit out of that. <laughs> they really did. Yeah. That is. That is. I think that just kicked ass on the other two. And then now go back to the nose, and you get some. Uh, you get some. Barrel, some dusty barrel. You do get barrel, but I'm also starting to get a plant, like green, vegetal, yeah. green vegetal note. Absolutely. Like a broken grass. Yep. And, or, you know. I'm getting a little dusty barrel and then that vegetal note. We got the... Hit me, baby. Timpy Drew. One more time. He's looking for advice of sourcing whiskey. And he went oh, yeah. a good website to find where certain brands are sourcing their whiskey. You know, I would love if somebody created that. Yeah. And then they became, they had a contact page that said, if you know where this distillery is getting their whiskey, sure. let me know and we'll add it into the database. Can we make that page? I don't want to maintain another no, page. No, it would be like a Magnificent but, Bastards job. There's, yeah. You know Somebody what? needs to create that page because that would be cool as shit. You know? Where it's like, if it says produced by, right. uh, and then would, there's just a whole sortable list. Comment if you want to be in charge of that. We got OzMD2015 ah, bottle down MBs. Please raise a dram for my brother-in-law who passed mm. away on Sunday. He was married to my sister for just just short of 60 years. Holy 60 crap. 60 years? Holy crap, man. Zero years? Damn. Years. I'm reading that right. Years. Yes. Six zero years. He was a great guy and will be sorely missed by many. Here's to you, Bill. Here's to you, Bill. And you're 60 years, man. Wow. Damn. Married for 60 years. 60 years. Like 50 is an amazing run. Yeah. For like a 50th anniversary? That's crazy. Okay, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.